Hey guys, Luke from A Taste of AZ. Super excited for today's podcast. We've got Flip from Freed Street. Flip's super positive and he's making some of the best fries in the world. Make sure to check out our website for some photos and subscribe to the YouTube channel below. We're here with Flip. Flip from Freed Street fries. Just, dude, best fries, the best fries ever made. Damn straight. I think that's official, right? I just read that somewhere. <laughs> that's 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 my uh, that's the like the caliber that we're trying to obtain, and and that's definitely you know what we're trying to do here. So it's gonna be the best fucking fries every time. Yeah. So. <laughs> yes, dude. So far, so good, man. Nice work. Yeah. Nice Thank work. You, yeah. So yeah, dude. Welcome to the show, man. Thanks for taking the time to to talk with us. Absolutely, dude. I'm psyched. We just had your fries the other day. Where'd we have them, Luke? You called it, too. Uh, we're like, at Handlebar. We are at Handlebar. Oh, yeah. And uh, as soon as I had the first fry, I was like, there's something different about this fry. And so I asked him, and he verified <laughs> that they were a free street. Yeah, Adam's a good dude out there. I love that guy. We started out, like, at the same time with trucks. So it's kind of, you know, there's a couple dudes out in the valley that, like, all kind of came up through that food truck scene. And now, like, you know, we've kind of all carved out our own little lane and our turning our our dreams into a reality so to say so like i got nothing but love for adam and he's a fucking hustler so i like that guy Dude, and he, he has is. really good french fries so. yeah <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> it does <laughs> i mean so, and i i want to see if he can put some of that short the short rib and cheese onto some of those free street fries right that's because he does the mac and cheese but Sign me up for that yeah yeah, yeah he does like a full-on <laughs> like mega mac and cheese so yeah dude that thing's so good so flip where where so you this all started in phoenix right like you were born yeah. and raised in phoenix yeah so like i'm a phoenix kid born and raised um the whole thing like kind of came about when so i used to work in the music industry that was like my first gig love success story um and i you know i got to travel to europe and i worked for a couple of uk artists and every night we would be you know shitty drunk and stoned and you wind up at a chippy you know you get it you go to a chip shop you get chips and cheese you get fish and chips you get a kebab and chips and then you go to europe and you're you know wandering through belgium or you're in amsterdam which is the best best time you could ever have and <laughs> you know you have an insane appetite and you know, at four in the morning, you just see dudes walking around with cones and sauce. And you're like, I need that in my life. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, like the whole, the whole thing just kind of clicked after doing that for about almost 10, 10 years straight. Um, when I wanted to get out. Yeah. Bands? Traveling, selling t-shirts, uh, living out of a suitcase, having a blast. But when I was ready to get off the road, my girlfriend fiance wherever we were we're still we're married so you know whatever it is in that time in our yeah. life but we were talking and I was trying to figure out like all right so what's my next move you know like I'm 27 28 I don't want to go to college and be 32 when I get out you know and the only other thing that I I was I really had a passion for and was invested in was cooking so it was like all right well like what could we do that would take my sales background and my love for food and you know the food truck scene was just starting out and so that was when it was like hey maybe we get a food truck and then like instantly my best friend and i were shooting the shit i was like well what would we do and it's like there's already hot dog trucks and there's burger trucks and there's barbecue trucks and you know like it's like man why don't we just do like a french fry truck like you know every time i'm in canada you know you get poutine you know when you're in you know england you get fish and chips when you're you know you get all the aiolis when you're in europe and it just kind of like just started to write itself to the point where I was like, Oh shit, like that's not a bad move. Like we could do really good French fries and you know, nobody would see it coming. We would be, you know, a side dish or an entree. We would be gluten free and vegan. So like, we're like, we just started coming up with all these ideas and we're like, yo shit, I think this could actually work. Like we could fucking sell French fries. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's, yeah. it's everybody's favorite vegetable. So, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, like, when you think about it, I, I'm a vegan food company, which yeah. is kind, of, which was not like our intention, you know. But like it sure. just kind of happened that way. So, yeah, like six years ago, we opened, we got the keys to the truck in 2015. Okay. Yeah, April of 2015, we ran the truck for like two and a half years, um, and then we transitioned to a wholesale business, like the end of 2017, early 2018. 
And that's when I sold the truck, moved into the warehouse and, and just started running a million miles an hour at just making the best French fries. Yeah. Like not, not worrying about the aiolis and, and all the little things, just like, just make, just stay in that lane, make fucking fries. And I could scale that out a lot bigger. So. And that's where you're at at this point. Yeah. That's where it, yeah. that, and that's <laughs> what got me till today. Yeah, here we are. So. Here, dude, well, I was hoping that, that maybe I could convince you to make some of those sauces, man. Like the, like dude, just a roast. I'll, th- I'll, 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 I'll whip up some aiolis for, for shits anytime you're in the area. I've got oh, like yeah. a, we've got like a little snack fridge and I've got like all these like, weird green chili aiolis that like vendors will break off for us and barbecue sauces and hot sauce. So like uh, we've got a quality sauce game, but I do miss the days of like making like a 60 egg aioli just for, you know, just on the fly. Like, Oh yeah. shit, we need more garlic aioli. All right, let's start cracking eggs and start whipping it. Like, here we go. <laughs> yeah. It's like everything on the truck was made from scratch. Like nothing was out, you know, nothing was processed. Nothing was out of a can. Like up until the last six months, I didn't even have Heinz or Hunt's ketchup. Like every, we made our own ketchup. And then yeah. I finally like cracked because it got really sad when I saw like little kids not like it, but their parents would eat it. And they're like, do you not have like packets? I was like, all right, I'll get some fucking packets for the kids. Like, all right, I get it. Like I have to, I have to, but yeah. So like every once in a while, I'll, I'll, I'll bang out some aioli just for shits. Like all the food festivals and stuff, we're just like getting back to our roots, you know, when we do that yeah. shit, so. That's like a playground for you, right? Like, yeah. The, yeah. the first time I ever had, um, I, w- I don't want to even say that first time I ever had a free treat fry. First time I ever had anything from you was at the 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 hot chicken throwdown. So it wasn't yeah. even a fry. It was a it was no, a chicken. but we did like hot chicken fries. <laughs> yeah, I was psyched great, on that. Man. I was so yeah. proud of myself for pulling that shit out. I was like, <laughs> yeah. yo, we did fucking we did hot chicken fries. Get it? And everybody was like, it's a hot chicken throwdown, and you brought French fries. I was like. Yeah, but I also made chicken tenders. Like, yeah. come on, man. I'm in both realms right now. Yeah. It's a French fry and a piece of fried chicken. Like, there you go. This is how I bring it together. Dude, dude. Like, I, <laughs> I, 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 I was sold. All the of a French fry. Yep, yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, dude, is it? So, so that so was it, fun, you know? Well, let, let's let's back up a little bit, right? So, I know you, you grew up in, okay. in Phoenix. Uh, is it true that yeah. when you were 12, you, you did a cooking class with Justin Beckett? Of Beckett's yeah, table. Yeah, so yeah, so I mean, he was he was 22, I think, when he, when I first met him, um, and I was like, like a, you know, I grew up and, and started taking little cooking classes at uh, Sweet Basil, which is like Scottsdale. It's still there today, but like Scottsdale and Shea. And my dad was a massive fan of Roy's, uh, which was like Hawaiian fusion Roy, oh, yeah. Roy yep. Choi. Like, and, and this is like you know, like mid 90s style so like he signed us up for this class as roy's was opening their first restaurant in scottsdale and i was like oh led by the sous chef so my dad signed us up and like my dad tells this story still to to today and it's it's hilarious because it it's so true but it's kind of fucked up like i was a little 12 year old shit that thought i knew a lot and like (laughs) justin's teaching this class explaining to people what you know like where to buy certain things what a burr blanc is and like every time he would ask a question i would answer like, because I was, like, a little nerd. And so yeah. he'd be like, yeah, we're not, this is a lemon butter sauce. I'm like, oh, like a burr blanc. I'm like, yeah, the kid's right. You know, like, yeah. oh, hey, well, you could find these mushrooms. I was like, yeah, you got them at Vincent's Market over on Camelback. <laughs> and then my dad would take me there, you know, like, back in the day when that was the only farmer's market. Yeah. And, like, at halfway through the class, like, Justin just started talking to me and my dad and was asking him, like, all right, kids, so, like, do you know what this is? Do you know how to, like, do you know this? Do you know this? And they were just, like we just kind of struck up this dialogue. And so after the class, like, my dad gave him his house number, his office number, and Justin invited us to the grand opening. Like, hey, we're opening in a few weeks. Come on out. You can be my guest. I don't have any family out here. Yeah. And so, like, we just kind of hit it off. And then over the years, he just kind of, like, treated me like a little younger brother and would, you know, ask me to come help him out or would, you know, like, he bought me a knife and then he would teach me how to use it and this and that. So, like, I got really lucky as that guy started, like, from nothing in Arizona because he, he, he moved over from Hawaii. Like he, you know, like we were like one of the first people he really met out here. And now like 20 years later, he's Justin Beckett who fucking kills it. Yeah. I get to be like, (laughs) I knew Justin Beckett when he was a sous chef and like my dad was his only friend. Like it's crazy, you know, but like he was at my high school graduation. He's at my wedding. Like I love the dude to death. And he, he's, you know, I don't know. I'm sure nowadays, like if, 
somebody's hanging out with a 12 year old is probably weird but back in the day it was super acceptable like oh yeah you know yeah. the age difference wasn't weird like yeah. it was just like i just wanted to learn and you know like in the kitchen it doesn't matter how old you are if you could hold a knife and you can cook like you're in you know so it was yeah. kind of like you know there were no like barriers like that it was just like cool it's, you're here to learn i'm gonna teach you some shit you retained it quick i'm gonna show you some more shit so hell yeah he probably loved that too man somebody who was yeah. excited and and i and i'm gonna go out on a limb and say this energy you have right now has always been there have you always oh, been an energy yeah, yeah i yeah <laughs> it's it's a blessing and a curse um my mother-in-law is the like education director at the temple that I grew up at and there's a couple of teachers that I was like you know like pre-k and like the threes and fours class yeah. and when my mother-in-law got hired at the temple they were like wait a second you're Philip Asari's mother-in-law I taught him 30 years ago boy was he a busy child and I was like fuck <laughs> you lady like I was three and like you remember that still like of yeah. all the kids that ran through that class like yeah. I stood out at like uh, barely communicative levels like yeah. like oh yeah like he was a busy child but he was a sweetheart and I was like I guess that's still true to the day yeah. so <laughs> I'll take that I'll take that yeah, right. yeah. where are you going yeah. with this where are you going with this energy yeah. thing yeah. <laughs> yeah clearly clearly I left an impression on people at an early age yeah, yeah I've, I've always been uh you know quick yeah you've always been flip right yeah. i mean that's, that's yeah i've always been flip yeah yeah it's yeah. kind of, it's kind, of it, it's kind of the persona of me it's kind of all embodied into that now so love it man that's awesome yeah. well, well, and so how did you how did you make the transition so you you go to this cooking class right you're starting to learn skills you love cooking why yeah. why and i don't want to say I want to say why, because I get it. I would do it yeah. too. 10 years on the road with rock, rock bands and shit. Like, Dude, why, how did total, that happen? It was a total accident. Literally, uh, like, I, I graduated. I, I was in high school. I started, like, helping out some local bands, not thinking, like, that would ever be a thing. And I was literally, I was working at, um, like, I was working at Bloom when it first opened when I was a junior in high school, which was, like, Sam Fox's, like, fourth restaurant. Okay. Um, and then Justin Beckett hired me to be his expo at Trader Vic's when that opened, when the Valley Ho first opened. And I was working there six nights a week. And literally, like, I was, the plan was to go to culinary school. Like, I had this whole thing. Like, I, th the path was written for me. Like, right, I got a mentor. He's given me a job. I've got a path. I got my own apartment. And then the local band that I worked for started getting really big. We did a festival in Arizona. And it just so happened that, like, they played right before 30 Seconds to Mars. And I outsold the shit out of them. Um, uh, 30 Seconds to Mars was Jared Leto's band. Yeah. And so, like, through the weird world of everybody that's ever met me that remembered me, um, their tour manager used to tour manage Guttermouth, which was, like, a badass little SoCal punk band. So he saw me, and I, like, ran my mouth to him. I was like, man, I fucking outsold you guys today in your big <laughs> band. He's like, well, you want to go backstage and meet the, meet the guys? And I was like, oh, shit. Um, okay. Yeah. Went back there, said hi to Jared and the guys, and they asked me, like, what I was doing. I was like, oh, I'm, you know, working at a restaurant, helping out Authority Zero, trying to tour and figure out what any 18-year-old is doing in their life. <laughs> Didn't think much of it. And woke up the next morning to an email that's like, yo, do you want to leave? You would leave next Tuesday. Here's the next six months with your itinerary pay and visas all covered. And I'm like oh shit um this this just escalated quickly so like <laughs> i had to i had to call justin i had to tell my parents like hey i know we were thinking i was going to go to culinary school in two months um i'm gonna go see what this is like like i'm out and, and, so this was know, 30 seconds to mars like this was their tour yeah manager? this was Holy yeah shit, so man. yeah and this was 2005 2006 so this is like right as they were blowing up and so I'm 18 years old and now i'm working for a movie star you know blah 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 yeah so dude that's pretty surreal man that yeah so it, it's so yeah i mean it wasn't like yeah i mean that's why when i was ready to get off the road the only other thing i had was like the culinary world and i was like yeah. that was that's right where i was getting into that was the path i was taking and now everything changed so i'm like all right let's 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 scale it back let's let's you know let's get back into the cooking world and see what i can pick back up and yeah. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's why there's a 10 year gap in my culinary career. It was like, I was destined for this. And then I just took a hard left turn for a little while. So, yeah, dude, imagine that. Like if, if you're in a, like a job interview, right. And like, someone's like, all right, man, can you explain this 10 year hiatus? And like, then you explain it. Yeah. And they're like, Oh shit, dude. You know, I'm so jealous to get the job. <laughs> they hire you on the spot because they're 
just so jealous, man. I can yeah. envision that. I can envision that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a, <laughs> it, it's certainly like a once in a lifetime opportunity. And I'm very glad that I said yes and did that. Cause I got to see the world and, yeah. and I have a shit ton of experiences that I will never be able to like, you know, like that I would have missed out on and who the, who the hell knows what my life would have turned out like. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you came back to, to start making badass French fries, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> for, for my own personal you. sake. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome, brother. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so why, like, why the French fry? Like, why was that the, 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 the avenue to go down? I know you kind of talked about it a little bit earlier, but how do you set a French fry apart? So, like, it just kind of was when we, when we were looking at doing the food truck, it was really like, what, what kind of niche was there not, you know, like we didn't want to be the third taco truck and then really have to be like, you know, like carving out our lane as to why we're better than the other rival taco trucks in the Valley, you know, like, so it was like, nobody was doing French fries. Everybody, you know, everybody was just do, you know, doing bagged, you know, restaurant depot fries on a food truck. and, and, And so when it came down to like, Hey, if we did this, like, then we got nerdy into how we would do it. Okay. Well, what kind of potatoes are they using in Belgium? What are, you know, what is the in and outs use? Why do people love these fries? And we just started to like really dissect the potato. And we're like, if we're going to make French fries, like get into it, like be the fry, like make, make a really good fry like know the quality, know why you're doing this. And so I just got really, you know, I, I got really into learning about the potato and, and, and how to make it a, a good thing. So, and what did you choose? Cause I know on your website, cause you're very open about it, right? It's not oh, like, yeah. it's not like you have a cloak over a set, you know, and you no, just right? pull up. I, I know why nobody wants to do this. Like yeah. it is, it is a grind. Like, yeah. it, you know, like I respect, I respect people that try to make their own fries, but I also laugh because like, there's so many people that don't think like, Oh man, you just cut a potato, throw it in the deep fryer. Problem solved. It's over. Right. And yeah. Like, oh, it's so much more. So yeah. Like, well, dude, yeah. trying to make it at home, like trying to make your own, like yeah. you find this Pinterest recipe, you find this recipe, you try yeah. them all. And it's like, shit, dude, like, what the fuck? This is not what I wanted. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and like, from like, yeah, like you could do the same thing three times and we'll get three different French fries, you know? Yeah. Like, yep. So yeah, our whole thing was as, as I really started to scale this out and as the food truck got more popular, like it was like, how do we replicate consistency? Like that's, yeah. that's what good restaurants do. You can go and have the same meal every day of the week. It doesn't matter who's back there. Like the same brewers, you know, like, Hey, this can has to be perfect every time. Like you can't have a good batch and a bad batch. So it was like, Hey, getting into it like this, if this is what you're going to do, like it has to be, it has to be good. And it has to be good every time, whether you're making it or somebody else is making it. So, yeah. Well, how do you do that? Like, so how do you, how do you, how did you create that? It's (laughs) so (laughs) this is where it gets funny. Um, I kind of found it on a bone appetite magazine. Uh, Uh, Okay. Okay. So like I've, I've tweaked it a little bit, but like everything was kind of like, okay, you got to brine, you know, you got to soak the potatoes that, you know, bleeds the starch out. What type of potatoes are perfect for frying? Like, and like, I remember like bone appetite did a whole thing where they broke down, like how to do fries at home, you know, like what potatoes are readily available, what, what to look for. And like, sure that's when I started to teach myself like, what, what do I, what am I supposed to do with this? And then, you know, it was literally trial and error until we thought we nailed it. Yeah. And then it was like, okay, can we do that again? Okay. Let's write this down. Now measure it. Can we do that a second time? Can we do that a third time until like, it doesn't matter what time it was. They taste exactly the same and side by sides and stuff. So yeah, Yeah. it really, they're, they're fickle, but it's just consistency. Like you have to soak them. You have to pull the water out of them. If, it, you just, you know, potatoes are 30% water, which is crazy. Um, so the reason they're always yeah. going soggy is because there's moisture in them um, okay. or they're just not being cooked long enough. So like, if you want to get a crispy French fry, you got to get the moisture out of it. You got to get the outside to get cooked. You got to get the inside to stay fluffy and mashed potato So it's just like yeah. all the little things that you could do to give you that consistent French fry. And that's kind of what we figured out. So it's potato, yeah. salt, and water, write that down. There's anybody can have my there. recipe yeah. <laughs> was there an aha moment where you had a fry and it was just the most delicious fry you've ever eaten in your life and you knew you were on to something yeah there was that moment when we realized like okay this is the potato we need to be using and it was when i was working at the gladly um bernie who, who's like I, I i look up to that dude and 
he really helped me get to the next level. Um, it's when he started ordering product for me through his, his, you know, restaurant, you know, like his, his distribution. So I wasn't going to fries and buying russets cause then I was struggling, you know, but he, I was like, Hey man, I'm trying to find this type of potato. And he's like, I'll order you 50 pounds. And I was like, Oh, I don't know if I need 50 pounds. Like that sounds like a lot. I buy maybe three pounds at a time. He's like, well, this is the minimum that comes in. And you're like, okay, we'll try it. I'll make and we, 50. You know, started. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. And that's when I was like, Oh man, Kennebec potatoes these potatoes are way better than russets. And then it was like playing with those that I was like, okay, now I'm, now I'm really seeing, you know, the difference from recipe to recipe and, you know, go from there. Yeah. And that, and that really, so like, it's, it's all about the potato, man. We use the, like fruit street uses the highest quality Kennebec potato. Um, I use one farm pretty much all year round. And so that's why I'm able to have the same consistent, crunchy, creamy Uh, center, same taste. It's not like I'm just buying like beef and you just hope like, hey, I hope it's the same cow, the same breed, the same feed. Like, no, I buy one potato out of one field and that's how I'm now able to like keep that quality the same. So it doesn't matter where you are, what day of the week it is. It's the same. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, once we learned, once we figured out the potato, that was like the, the aha type of moment. That's when it really hit. And are these potatoes available? Like, is it hard to find those potatoes for like a person at home wanting to make their own fries? So if you're like a, if you're a normal, just like sprouts shopper, you'll never see them. Um, okay. Kennebec are only sold uh, for processing essentially. So ah, like, gotcha. they're, they're the premier chipping and frying potato. So like you can't buy them in the grocery store. You can't get them at the farmer's markets because nobody really grows them out here. Um, everything is sold instantly for production. So all the big potato chip companies like Lay's, um, Poor Brothers, they use Kennebec potatoes. in and out uses Kennebecs. Hopped Outy uses Kennebecs. Uh, I use Kennebecs. Um, but you'll, you'll, you've now started to see people that'll say Kennebec fries, and that's one of the reasons why they're charging more is because it really is like the prime of a potato. So it, it's yeah. – three times the price of a ba- of a russet potato or a baker's potato. Gotcha. Um, but that's like, that's one of those like keywords now that are people, people are putting on their menu. Like if they don't say free street fries, they'll say Kennebec French fries. And I don't care if they put my name on their menu or not. They're charging a premium. People are eating them up like crazy. So like crazy, man. Like it's a good problem to have. It's a good problem to have. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, my, I don't have an ego, so as long as the check clears, you can you can say you made them yourself, man. Yeah. Just keep ordering them. So I don't give a shit. I love that, man. I love the honesty flip. That's that's great. Right. <laughs> so, so I, I remember when when we when we first met up, um, you were telling us about how you. I don't want to say you accidentally you stumbled upon it, but like the transition from having the truck to having people yeah. saying, hey, dude, I want your fries. That Yeah. I mean, that was that was, was kind of like the accident. The I think like most business owners will say like their biggest hit was like, like a mistake. Like they didn't realize that that was what they were supposed to do. And then it just kind of like showed up. Yeah. But I started cutting fries. We bought, we were like, we used to have like the wall mounts that you see and people would like slam a potato through. Oh, yeah. Um, and we were cutting, you know, like almost a thousand pounds a week on the food truck. And so like, it was, it was a lot of labor for me and my buddy. And so we started looking at like, okay, maybe we should like try to find something that'll automate it or help speed up the time. So we're spending less time prepping and more time, you know, on the road. Yeah. And we found a company that was selling like air compressed pneumatic slicers and they're like 2,500 bucks. I'm like, all right, well, this is like, this is the next step, right? Like this is, we're going from a hundred dollar slicer to a $2,500 slicer. Like, okay. And when we ordered it, they sent us like all the blades. Um, so it came with like a shoestring blade, uh, three eighths inch, which is like your standard like restaurant cut blade. Yeah. Came with a steak fry blade. Um, and so like I sent a video to to Bernie, and I was like, "Dude, check out this twenty five hundred dollars slicer." He's like, "Oh, did it come with any like any other blades?" Because the fry we make, we literally would take apart a blade and we would pull out every other knife to make a custom size that nobody uh, had. That was our whole, like on the, on the food truck was like, we just want to stand out. We want to be sure. that. Like we want everything to look like nothing else. So I told Bernie, I was like, yeah, it's got all these other ones. He's like, cool. Well, like cut me one. I'm curious to see like how it would taste. I'm like, okay. And a week later, like I'd done a couple different blanches to figure out like how to get the center creamy enough so that when I fry it the second time, it's still intact while the outside gets crunchy. And I brought it to him and he was like, Oh, these are fucking good. 
Like, thanks, Jeff. Like, uh, awesome. He's like, I'll put 100 pounds at Citizen and give me uh, 50 pounds at the Gladly. He's like, okay, cool. Like, not n- didn't think much of it. I thought it was like a one-time thing. Maybe he's going to run a special. Yeah. And then he's like, I'll take it every week. I was like, oh, okay. You can, <laughs> I can do that. Like, it's, yeah. it's frozen. So on prep day, I'll then cut, you know, all the potatoes for the truck, and then I'll cut three or four more cases for Bernie. And literally, like, that was what did it. Like, yeah. you know, overnight, then somebody else heard, like, yo, I, I heard you're making fries. I'm like, yeah, man, I got a food truck. He's like, can I get 50 pounds, though? Like, the same size that he's getting? And I'm like, yeah, that's a thing. Like, okay. And then yeah. another chef and then another chef. And it got, it got within like the first four or five months that we were making more fries for chefs out the back of the food truck than we were making for the food truck. And that's yeah. when it like, it, the light bulb went off. I was like, I think we're looking at things a little different. And my, <laughs> one, one of the chefs that I look up to, who's now my business partner, uh, Josh Hebert, the guy who owned Posh and has hot noodles called Saki. He was like, dude, like the food truck is great, but like, you're going to kill yourself running it. Like the whole thing is how many places can you be at one time? Like how scalable is this? And unless you're going to open five food trucks to be in Phoenix, Gilbert, you know, Chandler, Mesa, whatever, every night, you're only going to have one location. Whereas like you can be on multiple menus across the Valley and like selling product that way. Like just make the base product, give it to the chef. They'll sell it and they'll keep reordering, you know? Yeah. So that's simple, um, but just golden advice, man yeah you know yeah it's and so like that's when it really that's when it really triggered and that's when you know uh josh was like hey if you want to do this like i'll help you scale this out i would love to be your partner on this um and so i i, I looked at it and i was like you know what I'm, I'm working 100 hours a week on the food truck it's hot it's summer i'm killing myself just you know just what what's my next move And so I was like, all right, maybe this is like the next move. Um, And so, you know, Josh helped me get into this warehouse. We sold the food truck, paid off all of our debt and really went, you know, balls to the wall on on scaling up the wholesale. Um, Yeah. So like it, it, it was all an accident. Like I really thought Street Street's next move was like getting a brick and mortar in either old town or downtown Phoenix, someplace with event traffic and late night. And, you know, like I'll just be the drunken stop, you know, you go to a yeah. bar and then I would be the chippy shop. Like that's where my head was like, Oh, I'll just be like a free shop. Like you, you know, like I used to go to like yeah. nothing in Arizona. Um, and yeah, and now, now, now it all changed, but for the Pumping better. Out, yeah. 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 Heck it's, yeah not a, it's not a negative. It's definitely an okay thing. Dude, that's, that's awesome. Well, it went, what really impresses me is because, I mean, you're very open about it too. You've told us, you're like, dude, my fries aren't, they're not cheap. You're not, you know, yeah. they're, they're a premium product, but you had a chef's approaching you, right? Like yeah. you weren't even like, you're just, you're trying to sell French fries out of your truck and they're knocking on the back door saying, Hey dude, yeah, I, I want to buy these. I want to buy these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's How, awesome. What do you, man. Like people and like the whole thing, like I kind of taught myself as we go, like, Hey, what's your pack size? And then I had to buy, you know, bought a scale. And I was like, I could fit this many pounds in a milk crate. Okay, that's your pack size. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like every little thing just kind of was like, somebody asked the question. And I'm not, you know, I'm in business to try to pay some bills. So I'm like, I'll figure it out, chef. Like whatever yeah. the fuck you ask, like I'm down. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you have, uh, you have a wide range of products too. Like, right. I mean, it's, there's different French fries. You have the potato yeah, chips. Now, like- now it's. It's, but it's all by accident. Like we have four, uh, I have five sizes of French fries. I have a breakfast potato and I have a potato chip. And every one of those products is because somebody asked like, Hey kid, can you make me this? Yeah. And then like the same thing hits me. It's like, well, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say no, give me some time. Like I'll figure it out. I'll make you a sample. And if this works, then we'll go from there. And every one of those times has been like, stick, I'll take it. Yeah. Oh, snap. Okay. Uh, <laughs> crap all right we can we'll do it that's fine like uh what do we just do we created a new product like gosh okay okay (laughs) so um, a man with less energy would have collapsed by now flip i just want you to know that so uh you're 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 keeping up with all these these shots coming at you so nice work dude yeah (laughs) so what's um so you've got a wide range of products. Uh, what are there things available? Cause I know for a period of time, um, kind of the beginning of quarantine, you were doing the, the French fry. Uh, yeah. The like fry the kits. Control. Yeah. yeah. So, so mostly you're, you're, you're dealing with, with restaurants, right? So, yeah, so, so people can get your, your fries there, but yeah. 
there's other options. Yeah, I mean, like on our website, we now have like a whole little store so people can order chips or fry kits and we'll deliver. They can come pick them up at the shop. Um, we have about eight different like uh, local butcher shops and farmer's markets that carry our, our potato chips now as like a oh, finished nice. product, okay. which is super rad. And and that's really like a whole nother thing. Like that literally was my last mistake that turned out to be good. But <laughs> that was all because, you know, COVID hit and we're trying to figure out how to get Fries to consumers, you know, um, we created the French fry kits and my oil company literally made me like badass little bottles of oil and, yeah. you know, how to instructions. So like, cause everybody was out in the grocery stores, like, you know, every bad frozen food product was sold out cause people were like apocalypse shopping. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And then people were like, dude, like I would buy good apocalypse food. Like I'm stuck in the house. Like, <laughs> let me buy some. So we just, you know, we had. The, the shitty part is, is this whole happened because we had like two orders that essentially were supposed to go out the week that Arizona shut down, mm. Vegas shut down, Chicago shut down. And like the, the buyers were like, hey, man, like we know we ordered this product. Like we're closed. We're, we're canceling all orders. And I was like, oh, shit. Well, what am I supposed to do? I have 200 and something cases of frozen product now. Like I get it. It'll sell. It's got a year shelf life. I'm not worried about it. But like all my money is stuck in that. Like now yeah. what am I supposed to do? And so we just kind of opened them back up and put them in cute bags and, you know, started breaking it down. Like, Hey, we're not too prideful. Like we'll hustle. However we have to, I'll sell yeah. it in $10 increments or $50 increments. So like, cool. And we just kind of put it out there. And like the first weekend we announced that we were selling, you know, three pound fry kits with a jug of oil, we sold like 50 and I was like, Oh shit, that's pretty cool. My oil company made me like 55 jugs. So I called him. I was like, Hey, like I sold 50 of them. Can you make me some more? And like, yeah, we'll make you 120. He's like, okay. And then over the next seven days we sold every one. And I was like, I just sold 170 fry kits direct to consumers. Like, huh? <laughs> Shit. Okay. Well, I've got a bunch of frozen potato chips, like started seasoning them, brought them to, to Ronnie up in cave Creek. And I was like, Hey, here's like four bags of salt and four bags of barbecue. Tell me if you would like, if they'll sell, like, don't pay me, just put them on the counter. Let me know what people say. Like we eat them for snacks all the time in the shop, but I sell it as a frozen product to Cisco. Yeah. And she called me like two days later. She's like, so I'll take a dozen of everything you make. And I was like, <laughs> Oh, okay. And then from there, I was like, we hit up Nick at Arcadia meat market. And I was like, Hey bro, like I just put these up in cave Creek. He's like, sick. Give me 60 of them. It's like, okay. <laughs> went, went up and saw Eric at Steadfast and bought him a bag. And the next day he's like, I'll take 36 of them. And like, everybody just started like, and open them up. And so now we're like, oh shit, we make potato chips. Like real talk. We make potato chips now. Like, okay. And it, that's big, so every, man. Yeah. So like I, the support has been huge, but like, obviously people aren't going to, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll buy it once to support you. They'll buy it every week if it's fucking good. So like sure. the support was the great first test because people trusted us to be like, Hey, we'll put it out there and we'll see how it does. But now we know like people fucking like it and, and they'll buy it every week. So, yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah, the, this whole thing is another oops that turned into a good oops, you know? <laughs> well, dude, Flip, I'll tell you this, man. You seem to be enjoying the ride. So I, I, I appreciate it's, that it's about wild. you, man. Wild. Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't trade it for anything because it's a trip. So, yeah. well, dude, like, in, I mean, it, it's honestly getting a, a Luke can attest to this. It's getting harder and harder to go to our favorite places without finding free street fries out, which is a happy surprise for us. It's a good, it's a good problem to have, though. I apologize about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but dude, you're everywhere, right? I mean, because I saw on the website it's over a hundred, but that's yeah. That's I think I'm at like a hundred and I think I'm at like a hundred and. I don't know, 105, 106. Okay, we I'm just landed like a couple of restaurant range. groups that have like multiple yeah. restaurants. But the crazy thing is, is like I'm now selling French fries without ever shaking the chef's hand or meeting them. And that's a trip. Like yeah. when we launched in Vegas, like we got into some of the casinos without me even doing a tasting. Like the purchasing buyer would order a case, would be like, these are the best fries you've ever had. And then would run them through the hotel. Yeah. So like I would come up two or three weeks later and they were like, I was like, oh, so where are we going next? Like, oh, you're going here. Like six. So what do I need to know about the chef? What's his vibe? He's like, he's already buying 10 cases a week. And I was like, wait, what? Like, I don't even have to like, you know, like give him the spiel and like beg for his business and be like, Hey, like, he's like, no, like he loves it. He just wants to meet you now. And you're like, Oh snap. Okay. Like yeah. this is super cool. So it, it's crazy. Cause especially in Arizona, like for the longest time I thought, you know, to start, we were finding the niche that we were because we were local and not because it was quality. 
Uh, um, and now as we okay. go out of state, it's purely because of the quality. You know, nobody gives – people care because they'll connect to me and they're like, I'd rather give that kid money than somebody I've never met. Sure. But it's not because I'm a Vegas kid. I'm not a Cali kid. I'm not a Chicago kid. Um, you know, I'm not a Philadelphia, oh, I'm a Philly kid, but like the, you know, like it's, it's now sheer just because the, be- it's the best quality. Um, yeah. and I, I kind of had a really cool talk with Bianco about it a while ago when I was trying to really, you know, get this thing to that, to that level. And we're going to start going out of state. And I was like, I'm a little nervous. And he's like, I'm a local pizza maker. My tomatoes are from California. Like, you know, like eh, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a tomato maker in California. I'm a, I'm a local tomato guy in Arizona. He's like, I just make the fucking best tomatoes. I found this farm. I can them this way because that's what the, that's how you get them to be the best. Like, yeah. he's like in Arizona, I'm the local guy, but he's like, everybody knows me around the country as being one of the best pizza makers. Like, and it's because I care about where shit comes from. Like my pecorino comes from here. My olive oil comes from here. You know, like yeah. it's what you put on the plate and how you bring it together. And I was like, God, you're like you're right like you know everybody is always nervous like is my beer is you know four peaks going to be good out of arizona or is it is it just because it's in arizona that they're sure. like we're, yeah. they're the hometown heroes and then you start hearing like people like oh man that kill lifter's pretty good you know like yeah. i'm sure ballast point and, and, and you know like lagunitas were probably paranoid as shit as they started going out of you know out of their hometowns and now they're like no man we just make killer beer like yeah. hate on us all you want like it's just good people like it it doesn't matter if they're from the california or where they're from you know yep so i i i kind of just realize that as long as you just care about making the best and you you do that then there's always going to be somebody for that sure so now out of arizona we're just known as the best french fry i, I can still cut against any of the other products out there and be like my fry is better than that you know yeah. and like i'm not competing about any other thing other than if you want the best french fry on um, you know if you've got a 60 dollars steak and you give them a shitty french fry like you just you fell apart so fast at the very yeah. end like why not <laughs> just take the time and give them a really good french fry for a really good piece of meat like give them the full package you got total plate and people are like you're right like i need i need to set my game up but for so long there's only been so many options yeah. so like now that we're out there like it's a whole new world again for people to be like oh, i didn't know there was a better option because there yeah. there really isn't any frozen Kennebec french fries there's nobody doing Kennebec fries on a scaled out basis um the like the biggest french fry companies who own all the fields just make russets and so uh, like you know that's like the the thing like i'm just coming out i'm not going after their clients as much as their clients want a better product and we're just staying in that high-end category and just uh, focusing on being the best fry so yeah yeah, yeah. Well, you're doing it, ma'am. You're doing it. Damn straight. You're doing it. <laughs> doing it well. Damn straight. straight. <laughs> yeah. So, so you, you said something in the beginning. We didn't dig into it too much. So before we wrap it up, I want to hear this. Yeah. But you, you had said that you understand why people haven't done this, right? Because it's, yeah. uh, it's, Dude, it's, it's not. A, it's a labor of love. Like, <laughs> it's a lot of fucking time for a side dish, you know? Like, Imagine if you were to have pasta salad on the menu and you make your own pasta and you mill your own, you know, your own grain for that pasta. Like you got to be yeah. really hyper nerdy into being like, I got to make the best fucking pasta salad possible. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, why? It's the side to your, to your sandwich. Just make, bake your bread, roast your meat, slice your cheese, use killer tomatoes. Like, dude, it's a fucking pasta salad. It's your $3 side dish, you know? And a yeah. lot of times that's, that's where the, the French fries are. It's the, it's the side of the plate, you know, like your entree comes with one of the following sides. Sure. Um, yeah. But like for us to make a fry, so from a raw potato to being finished is 72 hours. Okay. And so like yeah. just putting that much effort into, into a French fry is yeah. like, you have to, you have to really like, I don't want to say care that much, but you have to really fucking want to make the perfect French fry <laughs> yeah. to be the side dish, you know, like, so now that we're out there, it's, it's like the chef's like, if I had the time, if I had the labor, if I didn't have to worry about certain costs, cause your labor's going to go up, your oil's going to get trashed, the, the amount of space in your walk-ins, like potatoes are super finicky. So like you have to hold them at certain temperatures. When you soak them, you have to soak them for a certain amount of time. Otherwise, you're not pulling the starch out. You got to blanch them. If you're going to blanch them in oil, then you got to blanch them for a certain amount of time. You're now adding water to your fryer. That's going to then kill your oil twice as fast. So it's like, there's so many like things that are like, Nope, don't do it. Why? There's four red flags in your way. Yeah. Like, 
And that's, you know, so like for us to be like, Hey man, I will do everything you possibly can think of. If you were to do it in, in your dream kitchen in a perfect scenario and they would be perfect every time, you know, like you would have to have that much effort to say like, I will take this much time out of my day to just make the French fries every time. And so like now we're giving that chef an option. It's like, Hey man, if you run the numbers, like it's pretty much a wash. Like you might as well buy them from us. Our price is locked in for the year because we, we buy so much from Idaho that I get a contract. So it's like, you might as well just figure out food costs on what our item is and just run with it. And you won't have to worry about any of the million headaches that being a chef or owning a <laughs> restaurant or, you know, like comes with like, yeah. at least, you know, your fucking French fries are fine. You know, like <laughs> yeah. dude didn't show up. Cool. Well now we don't have fucking French fries today. Like, right. Oh, you do. They're in the freezer. You're good. Like yeah. perfect. So uh, yeah, I dude. Mean, they're, they're just labors of love, bro. And like, you know, you can't, you can't take shortcuts when you want that, you know, like you can't smoke a brisket for four hours and expect it to be little miss quality, you know, like sure, yeah, that shit's got to smoke for the right amount of time at the right temperature. Otherwise it's, it's not, you know, competition brisket. You gotta, yeah. there's certain, <laughs> yeah. there's certain things that just take time and French frying is unfortunately one of them, which is why like there's either average fries or really good fries. Cause there's no like in between. So. Sure. Yep. Yep. Yeah. What, um, what's on the, on the forefront for, for you, for you, like what's for free street or, 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 I, flip or I mean, we're, yeah, I mean, we're, we're kind of riding this wave. Obviously 2020 is a fucking emotional roller coaster. Yes. Um, yeah. we, we launched in Vegas in January and that was going crazy good um vegas is like probably one of the perfect markets because the amount of high-end shit and the caliber of the clientele and when you're there you know there's so many chef driven restaurants that need good french fries um we were launching in chicago um middle of march and the week i was supposed to be flying i was supposed to be flying out on like a wednesday that monday is when the city shut down after saint patrick's day Uh, um so like as soon as it's safe to travel in Chicago and get up there, um, we're launching Chicago. So nice. that's a huge steak and potatoes town. There's a boatload yeah. of Michelin star restaurants and killer gastro pubs. And like, it's, it's a chef driven town where people care about their food. Um, and so we really are confident that that's going to be a huge market for us. Um, we're starting to ship a little bit more product into Texas, which I'm psyched about. Cause that's, I mean, Texas is fucking huge. Dude, um, yeah. So it's really like free street turned in from like this local, you know, French fry company to now we're really going like national. Um, and we have the distribution to do it and we have the farm to supply us. And so now it's really like, okay, we're, you know, my goal is in five years to be like the name brand, like a uh, Simplot or Lamb Weston, um, who were like the Kings of the French fry world. Um, Simplot created McDonald's French fries. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so this dude, like, He's the largest French fry company in the U S but you know, I want to, I want to get my, my aspirations are now from like Arizona bound to like, I want to be the, that brand, you know, like I want to go for it. So hell yeah, man. That's, that's awesome. You know, dude, I'd be careful though, man. You start getting up into that, the higher end of the French fry people, you might end up with like a sliced potato in your pillow or something. Dude, I, (laughs) I have, especially in Chicago. No, right. I am like super like. It's either going to end one of two ways, really good or really bad. So, <laughs> hey, there might dude. be one day where I'm just like hitting you up like, yo, man, you need me to wrap some cables or like, yeah. what do you need? <laughs> or there's going to be one of those days like, hey, man, why don't we just like meet at our corporate facility? And you're like, oh, snap, you yeah. uh, you stepped your game up, you know, like, so yeah. I That's mean, what I'm, I'm going, saying. I'm yeah. going for broke, man. Like, you know, I got one shot at this. I'm just going to keep running a million miles an hour. So yeah. I love it, man. <laughs> well, dude, you know what I love too is, is, is you've said it multiple times. It's like, just make the most badass product that you can, right? Focus is yeah. like, that's the central point that, that helps it gives you that Northern light, that guiding light to say, all right, what's, is this decision yeah. going to make this thing the best that it's, it could be? Yeah, like yeah. W- we've never come out with a B grade product, you know, like I never wanted to be the just, okay, I need to come in and, and just, you know, just get into this tier. Like I was like, no man, like, we are, we are the highest quality French fry. Like, I don't want to be the well, I want to be the premium, you know? So like, I just look at it like that. And as long as I think we keep that as our goal, like we're not going to, we don't take shortcuts. We don't shave pennies to, to, you know, like we make it the right way. And and I think enough people will be out there, you know, like 
I'm not the fry for everybody, but I'm for the chef that wants to stand out or to have a cut above. So yeah, I feel, I feel like that'll really give me um, a nice lane without getting too crazy because you know, the, the Simplot and the Lamb Westons, they are the only option out there. And it's like, cool. Like, I, I just want to carve out like 1% of that market. You know, you sure. can keep 99%. You could have yeah. all the drive throughs <laughs> You could have all the, all the, the, you know, restaurant tiers that, that don't want to charge, you know, $4 for a side of fries. I know that sounds crazy and it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's like a whole thing, you know, like I'm five cents more an ounce and I, I'm okay staying in that upper tier for that reason. You know, like I'm not going to come down into their world. I don't think they're going to come into my world. If they do, then one of us is going to put a potato in somebody's bed. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, man. There it is. So, it has yeah. been on your mind. It has been. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't like a, 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 you know, a Godfather reference here or there? You yeah. Know? Like, <laughs> hey, you know what? Like, you're, that's a good point, though. You could be the one cutting the potato. So, that's, you know, you know it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck in their lane. Then I, then I did it, you know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh shit! We'll flip, dude. Oh, man. Yo, thank Good you so much you, for having me, man. You Absolutely, guys, you, dude. I could hang out with you all day. So you're red, dude. We need to. We need to. We'll, we'll grab beers next time, like in person. There you go. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If this was me talking sober, just imagine if you give me two or three. So. Ah, that's that's the goal. That's the goal. So. <laughs> awesome, awesome guys. Thanks, man. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. You guys be good. You too, buddy. Later. Well, guys, we hoped you liked that episode as much as we did. Flip's a super awesome dude, and his fries are second to none. You gotta make sure to try them sometime. Make sure to follow Freak Street on social media, as well as A Taste of AZ. Check out our website and subscribe below.